So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. In our uh, house, we have a simple rule. Uh, if there's extra, for example, an extra slice of pizza or extra dessert, uh, and, and two people want it, it is uh, to be divided. But the key part is the second part of that rule, is that if you are the one who cuts the thing in half, you do not get to choose your piece. You have to offer it to the other, and they get to choose. So... Without that rule in place, basically you go over and slice off just a little bit more and hand them the smaller chunk. In our world, many people think that they deserve a larger piece of the pie, if you will. Uh, From the time we are small children, we're taught that doing more is worth more. You know, in the neighborhood, we had a lot of kids in the neighborhood I grew up in, and uh, Many, many of my friends were given an allowance, uh, this monetary reward for doing a certain number of chores. I was not one of those fortunate to get that, but uh, my friends would get money, uh, an increasing amount of money as they got older, as the responsibilities got a little bit larger. When we were in elementary school, a number of the kids uh, got money for uh, taking out the garbage or feeding the dog and vacuuming a room, and that was the responsibility for the week. Uh, as teenagers, though, they, it was their job uh, to, to mow the lawn, to clean the garage, to watch siblings, and they got a little bit more money. And, uh, you know, doing chores and uh, giving kids an allowance, uh, you know, you, whether you agree with it or not, but uh, certainly a lot of us agree that it's good to have, for a kid to have a part-time job in their teenage years. It teaches them a little bit about this world that you have to work to be paid. And certainly, I, almost every parent I have ever known would, uh, they, they hope to teach their kids that hard work pays off in this life. And, and I think that's why the gospel lesson today is so incredibly irritating and can get under your skin. Because it's so easy to identify with those servants who grumble in the story today, the ones who work from sun up to sundown throughout the heat of the day. 12 hours, and then they watched the ones who had worked just one hour get paid the exact same, a full day's wage. The ones who worked the full day expected more. The ones who worked the full day should get more. Most of us would agree with that. More work should equal more pay, because as we teach our kids, hard work will pay off. But in Jesus' story about the kingdom, uh, it's different. The ones who work 12 hours get paid one denarii, a full day's wage, and so do the people who who work nine hours or six hours or three hours or one hour. And what I would say is that's not fair. Many of you would say that's not fair. But Jesus' parable isn't about human fairness. He's teaching his disciples about the kingdom of God, the way God rules in this world. And in a sense, what Jesus is teaching his disciples is God really is not fair in the way humans think about fairness. And to that, you and I should say, thank God, praise God for that, because the truth is God is a God of justice and mercy, not human limitations of fairness. God is a God of justice and mercy. Most of us, we are trained to identify with those 12-hour servants, those 12-hour laborers, the ones who worked all day and cried injustice at the people who came in late, worked one hour, and had generosity sort of showered upon them. The reality is you and I should identify with those late-coming servants because in many ways that's the way God treats every one of us exceedingly generous. The way the workers are chosen in Jesus' parable is also kind of a bit unpredictable. You know, um, we're, we're taught in school, especially in this country, we, we, one of our core values is that all people are created equal. Equal, thank you. Just a history lesson. It's part of our identity, ingrained in us at a young, young age. But when push comes to shove, We all know that that's maybe intellectually true, but in reality, it's not. 
Because so many, some people are born into money and comfort and privilege. And I would be lying to you if I didn't acknowledge that that really is who I am. I was blessed with financial resources. I was blessed with a good home. My mom stayed at home. I was privileged in that sense. And I realized that far too many people in this world live in poverty or struggle to make ends meet. I realize I'm a person of privilege, and I know many of you are the same. Some people in this world are given great grace and athletic ability, and we know some people just simply can barely tie their shoes. They're so uncoordinated. Some people have great intellect. They can just understand things so easily. And other people struggle every single day to figure out what in the world is going on. Some people have severe limitations that make every day a challenge and full of obstacles. Some in our midst are always the people who are picked first in the marketplace, but some are almost always left out. But the truth is, all of us at some point or another can identify with those late coming 5 p.m. arrivals because all of us at times will find ourselves in a spiritual 11th hour, a bit alone, feeling unloved, feeling unclaimed at some point in our lives. As we gather here this day, we remember that we are always, always throughout our life dependent on the compassion and the generosity of God who is always merciful to us. Mercy is not a weakness. Mercy is actually a sign of exceptional strength. And it's a gift that God delights in sharing with us over and over and over again. You know, uh, we, we talked about sin a little bit with our confirmation kids today. The Greek word for sin is, is, sin is hamartia, which means literally to miss the mark. And picture a, a bullseye. We know that even though we want to hit the bullseye every time, oftentimes in life we really don't even get it on the, the grid itself. We totally miss the mark. And if you miss the mark, as I do often in this life, you realize mercy isn't an option. It's an absolute necessity. It's, it's as necessary as the air is that we breathe. Uh, one of my favorite stories is, is very, very simple. It's, it's about a, a woman who sat down to have her portrait painted. And uh, when, uh, when it was done, the artist uh, showed it to her, and she hated it. She just absolutely hated it with a passion, and he got defensive. And he, he said, I showed it to a lot of people who know you, and they said it, uh, it does her justice. And she said, I'm not looking for justice, I'm looking for a bit of mercy. And I just love that. We're all, we are looking for mercy. In, in Jesus' final hour of his life, though, you have to remember that mercy was the message that happened. In that final hour, as Jesus hung on the cross, every one of his closest followers had run away, and he's positioned between two criminals, one who pokes fun at him, makes fun of him, and the other said out loud, I'm getting what I deserve, but you, Jesus, are innocent, and he asks him, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the last person Jesus spoke to before he gave his dying breath was this man. And he says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Talk about an 11th hour conversion. But Jesus extends him full mercy and pardon and full brotherhood in the kingdom of God. These 11th hour laborers, that thief on the cross, the prodigal son who wasted everything, who thought he would never be welcomed home, yet the father embraced him fully. That's our legacy. That's part of the kingdom we are a part of. And that message of mercy, you realize, that's a message that this world needs to hear. And we need to be agents to extend that mercy and represent Jesus in the world. And when we do that, you realize people will experience great healing and hope. Amen.